severe storms moving through watches in 10 states as we come on the air. Blasting through New York City just a short time ago, day turning into night in the shadow of the Empire State Building. We all watched as the city suddenly turned dark, storm clouds moving in and quickly. Hail slamming down in Saugerties, New York, forcing cars to the side of the road just as many head home from work. Hundreds of flights canceled and delayed at this hour, thousands without power. Tonight, powerful storms lashing the Northeast. On Interstate 87 in New York, torrential rain making it impossible to see. Tractor trailers smashing, workers racing to clear trees from the roadway. Hail, some of it tennis ball sized, destroying windshields. Oh uh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, look at the whole truck. Those storm clouds rolling into New York City. This is a really dangerous situation as we go into the early evening hours. Wind gusts downing trees and knocking out power for almost half a million customers across the region. <laughs> Overnight, powerful straight line winds pummeling the mid-Atlantic. Tornado warnings and wind gusts topping 60 miles an hour at Dulles Airport. Travelers there forced to hide underground. Lightning sparked this house fire. Our David Curley on the scene. And you can see it struck this roof here at Tacoma Park. It caused quite a fire. 70 firefighters basically had to empty out that attic so that they could get this blaze out. Further west, hail turned roads into rivers near Denver and four tornadoes reported in Kansas. Just extraordinary pictures coming in at this hour. We can see the commute home there behind you, Gio. He's live on New York's West Side Highway tonight, a rough ride for millions. And Gio, you're already seeing flights affected here in the Northeast. That's right, David. Hundreds of flights have already been delayed or canceled here in the Northeast. That number is only growing, but I got to tell you, the wind here was so strong. Come over here just so you can see this. While we were standing here this afternoon, look at what the wind did to this massive light post here, David. Storm slamming the mid-Atlantic to New England, bringing chaos to New York's Grand Central with thousands stranded as commuter trains are suspended. The East Coast seeing sheets of rain, vicious winds, and lightning. With dangerous hail hitting Connecticut. We have a tornado warning. And parts of New York and Pennsylvania under tornado warnings. I'm Jacob Soberoff in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where moments ago residents here received a tornado warning and instructions to take cover. The rain and wind are intensifying. We're seeing lightning, but people are still out on the streets. Across the country, thousands of flights canceled or delayed. We planned on one day, so we don't have anything with us. Bradley International Airport near Hartford evacuating its air traffic control tower. Hundreds of thousands of people in the east left without power. It's really like somebody flipped a switch. It went from a beautiful sunny day to this here along the Hudson River. A lot of people surprised by how quickly this is moving through. Millions still bracing tonight as the storm now moves east. at a zoo as a powerful and unprecedented hailstorm pummels them. Giant hail the size of baseballs rained down at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo in Colorado Springs. 3,000 visitors were at the zoo when they fled to the zoo restaurant for safety. Five people had to be hospitalized. As you can imagine, getting hit by hail this size is like getting hit by a rock. Two animals did not survive the freak storm, a duck and a vulture. In a statement, the zoo said it was heartbroken to confirm the loss of a Cape vulture named Matswari and a Muscovy duck named Daisy. 300 cars in the zoo parking lot were severely damaged to the point that they couldn't be driven. This is truly a mystery here in BV, Arkansas, as people uh, in this town are still scrambling to kind of figure out uh, what exactly went wrong here, but it was uh, kind of paint a picture for you on New Year's Eve just before midnight. Uh, thousands of these birds in a very small area of BB just literally started falling out of the sky. People woke up on New Year's Day 
and found dozens of uh, these red-winged blackbirds just laying in the grass on rooftops, uh, covering the streets everywhere. As you mentioned, some 5,000 of them, um, and no one really knows uh, what happened to these birds. Now, to, to be clear, these these birds are a, a, a staple here in the in the town of BB. Everyone we've talked to uh, here this morning uh, in the, in this town northeast of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, says that uh, these birds are just everywhere. They flock uh, in the morning and in the evening. Uh, they're just you know they they, they can they can turn the sky black here. The worst outbreak in years of toxic algae known as red tide is killing thousands of sea creatures in southwest Florida and harming the tourism business. Red tide occurs naturally each year from Sarasota to Marco Island. It typically lasts about six months. This year's season is in its ninth month and a second toxic algae is coming from polluted lakes like Lake Okeechobee, some 80 miles away, and is making the problem worse. Good morning. You know the old saying, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Well, unfortunately, here on Sanibel Island, there's plenty of dead ones along the beach. Just take a look here. The tide has gone out and left behind thousands of dead fish. Even this big eel, this is a stinky and unsightly mess. This sandy stretch of Florida's Gulf Coast may look picturesque, but beachside, the view isn't so pleasant. Red tide is killing thousands of fish, eels, and other sea creatures. Since November, some 400 critically endangered sea turtles have died or been stranded. This little guy is doing pretty well. Dr. Heather Barron at Sanibel's Crow Wildlife Hospital is treating four times the normal number of suspected red tide cases this season. It just can't even describe what it's like to go out on the beach to do a rescue and just to be surrounded by all these critically endangered animals. Red tide is a naturally occurring algae that turns harmful in high concentrations. It usually forms 10 to 40 miles out, but winds and currents can carry it on shore. In humans, red tide may cause eye, nose and throat irritation, coughing, wheezing and shortness of breath. That's taking a bite out of Quinn Toussignant's Fort Myers beach business. Everybody's coughing. I work at a jet ski stand and I don't get any business anymore, man. Have you ever seen it this bad? No. I've seen some bad ones. This is the worst I've ever seen. Ozzie Fisher is a second generation charter boat captain. It's hard to breathe around it. Oh, it stinks. It, it really stinks. Water is our lifeline here. It affects everything. And if you lose this, there won't be anything here. We are at historic Lighthouse Point here on Sanibel, and typically this time of day, you've had loads of tourists out here enjoying their coffee, going out for a morning stroll. Right now, it's just a few hardy souls. Tourism is a $3 billion a year industry in this county. The economic hit is not yet known, uh, but we are told that some restaurants along the beach in Fort Myers have temporarily shut down out of concern for their employees' health. Many who are planning to boat or swim in America's lakes and rivers this weekend have to check not only the weather forecast, but also the water forecast. Rain, heat and pollutants are causing an outbreak of toxic algae. Exposure can cause a sore throat, nausea and other health issues. Lawmakers in Florida want the governor to declare a state of emergency over Lake Okeechobee's toxic algae problem. Manuel Bajorquez is there. Chris Whitman's been fishing southwest Florida his entire life, but the once postcard perfect summer waters are becoming fouled by slimy and toxic green algae. It's not looking good for the future. I mean, I've canceled my trips the last few weeks because of this issue, and I'm not on the water as much as I once was. It's a recurring nightmare, but this year's early bloom could signal one of the worst summers yet. The problem starts here, Lake Okeechobee, the aquatic lifeblood of South Florida. After heavy rains, the Army Corps of Engineers released millions of gallons to relieve pressure on the lake's old earthen dam. But the water is chock full of chemicals and nutrients, much of it runoff from commercial agriculture and sprawling development. When that mix bakes in the summer sun, the algae population explodes. Biologist John Cassani has been collecting samples and warning about the health hazards. The toxins the cyanobacteria produce are incredibly potent. They affect liver function. There's neurotoxins that they, they produce. So it's a, a suite of really toxic stuff that can kill wildlife and really impact people's health. 